All right, but for now, we're going to jump right into a Duracoat firearm finish moment. All right, about 10, 12 years ago, I guess it was, I jumped into the silencer, suppressor, gun muffler, moderator pool, and I got my first one, and then I got my second one, and so on and so forth. Uh, so I've had, I've had some cans so, for a while. Now, the truth of the matter is, is most cans... Uh, are finished with either a uh, a bluing or a parkerizing. Or some of them, like the 22 cans that have aluminum bodies, are anodized or adenized. Um, but uh, if you use them, if you actually go out and use your cans, uh, then what happens to them is well, they they get uh, well, they get kind of beat up a little bit. You know the 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 uh, finish it fades and wears and, and if they're uh, rifle cans and they're and the bodies are made of steel well what happens when steel gets used and abused and, and exposed to moisture and so forth it can rust right you're like oh no man, that's crazy it's like well that's the deal uh so what duracoat you say well but if i if you spray like <laughs> if you had a rifle can and you took your normal Krylon or whatever, and you sprayed it on there, and then you put it on your your weapon, and you shot it, it would be, well, you'd end up with an interesting pattern. Let's let's put it that way. You end up with an interesting pattern as it bakes and burns right off. Uh, because in case you haven't uh, noticed or gotten the memorandum, uh, cans get hot. Rifle cans get crazy hot why do they get crazy hot zach why do rifle cans get crazy hot because they're basically just containing explosions over and over again yeah because they're trapping the superheated gas from the rifle shot every time you press the trigger every time you press the trigger the can is filled with superheated gas and you do that over and over and over and over again and that side of the gun gets hot like crazy hot like cook bacon hot have you ever have you seen any of those videos where people wrap bacon around their their suppressors and cook it and stuff and yeah i wonder if it's any good afterwards probably not well i i, <laughs> I would make sure you know it's like well bacon's always good regardless but eh, i wouldn't want to i don't know if i'd want to eat it uh if that can is dirty and nasty but the point is if you have had one for any length of time, or if you are going thinking about buying one, or whatever, eventually you're it's gonna get beat up, and it's gonna look kind of kind of crappy. Uh, and the the truth of the matter is, I have a couple of rifle cans that I've actually used a great deal, and they eh, look kind of crappy uh, because I've had them for a while and I've actually used them. Um, so what you can do and what Duracoat figured out, what Steve Lauer figured out years ago, a few years ago, was that there are a lot of people in the United States of America that own rifle suppressors now, more than in the, the entire history of our country. Uh, and these people might want to refinish them once they get you know nasty. Or maybe you just want to get one and put a good solid Duracoat finish on it so you don't have to worry about it rusting. How about that? So he invented a product called Dura Heat, Dura Heat, and the Dura Heat 2.0 high temperature coating is available from Duracoat, and it comes in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine colors. Uh, you can get it in white, battleship gray. You can get it in desert tan. You can get it in flat dark earth, gunmetal gray. You can get it in interceptor red if you really want to do that uh matte black stainless steel finish and a twilight blue so uh if you've got a can if you've got a rifle can now can you do this with with 22 cans and can you do it with pistol cans yeah you can do it with the pistol cans pistol cans uh they get hot but nowhere near as hot as rifle caliber cans do uh, that's why they can get away with making aluminum bodies for 22s and stuff like that. You could not make an aluminum body can for a rifle. Well, you could, and then, 
you know, it would just melt down and, and warp after you shot it a few times and then you'd be done. But, uh, and those things, in, you, if you bought a rifle suppressor, if you bought a suppressor or silencer for your rifle, you know all that was involved in that. That's an investment, right? Do I have to remind you that that thing is an investment? Um, so you want to take care of it. You, you, this is something you're probably going to have for the rest of your life and pass it on to your kids. So uh, uh, they figured it out over at Duracoat. It's called Duraheat, and uh, you can you can get it in... Uh, Oh, two ounce bottles and four ounce bottles and uh, eight ounce bottles and 16. Uh, if, if, well, 16 ounce bottles, that's a lot. That's a lot of Duracoat. Um, you could do a fleet. You could do an entire fleet of suppressors or anything else. Let's say, you, you know, I don't know. Maybe you want to do something else that gets really, really, really hot. Maybe it's not a can. Maybe it's not a suppressor. Maybe it's something else. I don't know. So there you go, Dura Heat. It is available from Duracoat Firearm Finishes. Check those guys out by clicking the link in the show notes. Yeah, click the link in the show notes. 